body or in spirit, and join me in our call to worship. Who are you? I am a child of God. Who are we? We are the children of God, the family of faith. What does it mean to be children of God? We belong to God who loves us and calls us God's own. In life and in death, we belong to God. Come, let us worship God. Please remain standing and join your voices in our opening hymn, Jesus Calls Us, found on page 592 of your hymn.
second scripture is taken from the 19th chapter of Matthew, verses 12 through 14. The scripture is found on page 853 of your pew Bible. Listen now to this word from Holy Scripture. For there are enics who have been so from birth, and there are enics who have been made enics by man, and there are enics who have made themselves enics for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. He who is able to receive this, let him receive it. The children were brought to him that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people. But Jesus said, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. The third scripture is taken from the sixth chapter of John, verses 1 through 12. The scripture is found on page 928 of your pew Bible. Listen now to this word from Holy Scripture. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a multitude followed him, because they saw the signs which he did on those who were diseased. Jesus went up into the hills, and there sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said to Philip, How are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii will not buy in his prayers, each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has barely five loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the, man, the men sat down and numbered about five thousand. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, that nothing may be lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now ask the children of you to come forward. As we sing one verse of Jesus' life. Notice 
but they might have saw Jesus walking toward their town. So word traveled pretty quick, mouth to mouth, from people to people, and they knew Jesus was coming, and everybody wanted to see Jesus. Just like we like to do these things, everybody wanted to see Jesus. So in today's scripture, some moms gathered up their kids because they were so excited and told their kids, this man Jesus is coming, he's the most wonderful person, we want you to meet him. So everybody was excited and they all rushed to Jesus. And you know what the disciples did? They said, don't bring those kids over here, Jesus is too busy for those kids. That doesn't sound like Jesus at all, does it? Because did you know what happened next? Jesus kind of was like, look disciples, you don't know what you're talking about. I want these kids to come. And Jesus let all the kids come. And he prayed for them. And he played with them. And he did all these wonderful, wonderful things to make the children feel just as important as the adults. Because in Jesus' eyes, we're all important. It doesn't matter if you're little bitty or if you're great big. We're all important to Jesus. Okay, I want you to remember that as you go out into the world this week, that we're all important to Jesus, all equally. Okay? Let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Um, so the scriptures that were picked today, uh, the first year, obviously, uh, you know, we've got children coming to Jesus and Jesus walking them, and even telling the adults at the time that unless you become like these little kids, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And then we get the last scripture reading, which is about feeding the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, there was a kid little guy that actually had the five loaves of bread and fish, but it really wasn't about the kid in that story so much. And you might wonder, okay, well, I'm going to tie these together. Well, you're going to have to wait. I'm going to tie it together when I get to the end. Uh, my kind of spiritual, inspirational minute or moment happened this week. I told you it happened to John. It happened to me, and it has to do with that story right there. So you're going to have to wait for that story. Okay, so we're going to start out with, I've done this before, we're going to start out with the characteristics of kids, little kids. Um, and so one that Jesus noted was being humble. Okay, so we all, we all know what humility is. And, and granted, kids haven't got to the point where they can be hurt. They can be pretentious. They can, you know, seek power. I mean, you know, the little guys are, are you know, they haven't got there. Eventually that might happen, but I mean, when they're a little bitty, they're just they're enjoying life and, you know, want to participate. And so being humble for a little guy or gal is pretty easy. But that's one of the characteristics. One of the other characteristics is what I call uninhibited joy. Okay, I mean, it's the little guys have, you know, the leaping with joy love. When's the last time we as adults were so excited that we could actually leap with joy? I mean, it's been a long time for me, I can tell you. I don't know if I can leap very high anymore. I want to hurt something if I did. But anyway, but it's that level of joy that these little kids have that we as adults kind of lose. Um, you know, I remember, you know, I guess the first time that I talked about this, I'd been to Cub Scout Day Camp. And you had all these little Cub Scouts running around, and I was up at school. And I mean, they're excited, they're laughing, yelling, screaming, and I'm sure some of the adults were saying, just get me out of here, I don't want to be here. And I looked out there and I saw all that enthusiasm. And I thought, man, this is cool. You know, why do we lose that as adults? Well, anyway. I didn't have an enjoy. Uh, genuine love. Well, I got a lot of that this weekend. 
We had Harper and Elliot. And I got more genuine hold on to your neck car clothes than I've had since they were their last problem. Um, it's that kind of genuine love that God wants us to share with each other. Now, I understand that, you know, well, there's limits to what we can do as adults with each other, and that's all going good. I mean, with family, we can kind of hug for longer and that kind of thing, but I mean, it's even like church members. I mean, you know, we probably don't want to hug, you know, that person the way that kid hugs us, but that is the kind of pureness, the kind of genuine love that we get from these little guys that Jesus says, you need to do more like What's next? Implicit trust. All right, the little guys and guys. They don't know any different other than to trust. Who's ever telling us? That makes them vulnerable, of course, and then we have to kind of protect them. But, you know, they have that, you know, that, that vulnerability, but in this case, a gift, where they don't question stuff. I mean, you don't get to the age where they will. But, yeah, it's like, you know, Jesus said that if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you can move that mountain. Well, a lot of us probably don't have that much. I don't think I have certainly the faith of a mustard seed then, because I don't know how many mountains I feel like I can move. But it's that, you know, undaunted, un sort of compromise trust that these little kids inherently have. That Jesus says, you need to be more like them. You need to be more like them. Open mind. Sometimes little kids are referred to as a sponge. They just soak everything in. And you throw it at them and it sticks. You know, it's crazy. It's a lot harder, I think, for us sometimes when we know this stuff to get thrown at us. But little kids, it sticks. That can be embarrassing sometimes. You know, something to set around a kid and you don't want that shared with somebody else. And the little kid says, oh, by the way, he said this, he said that. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, Open mind. You know, I, I sometimes compare that little child to that garden that you just till, break, correct. I mean, this, you know, here it is out there. And you got all the weeds out of it, you got the soil churn, you got maybe you got your little string lines in there where you're gonna put your seed. I mean it's red. Absolutely red. And so that, you know, that fertile garden is what these kids are. They're ready for you to put the seed in. And God will take it from there. And, you know, how much of a struggle is it? Not that, and it does have it. Thank God it does have But when you're trying to plant seed, you know, with that older, kind of salty, woodblock experienced person, you got to punch through a lot of stuff to get there, to get down to that fertile soil. You've had all the life full of experiences that it's got weeds and all kinds of stuff that's choking out what you want to try to put in. And so it's a lot harder. Thankfully it happens. But we got these kids now and we've got, you know, the turtle ground. And we need to take advantage of it. Okay. We're now to why I picked the feeding of the 5,000. Okay, so Tuesday. Uh, the elevator guy was here, and he was taking quite a bit of time to work on the elevator, so I had some time to kill. Well, I did probably what most of us do now. I'm ashamed to say, I pulled out my phone and I played with my phone. Right? And, you know, I went through my contacts, I went through my pictures, and I went through text messages. 
I mean, and I got to a point where I probably cleaned up everything I really wanted to clean up. I didn't have anything else to do with my phone. In. I'm not a real Google searcher on my phone because the picture is small and uh, whatever. But I'll be able to do that at the office when I've got a nice big screen. But on here, I don't play with it a lot. So anyway, I'm going to lean back in the chair and I'm going to go over there at Pastor Steve's bookcases. Um, and there's a book there by a college uh, quarterback named Tim Tebow. Now, most of us that have followed college sports know who Tim Tebow is. I mean, he, interesting guy. I mean, he was raised by missionaries, and apparently they were in the Philippines when he was even born. So he'd been brought up, you know, around Christianity. And so he had a very successful college career. He won two national championships at Florida. He won a Heisman Award. But his quarterback he never did really transition to the NFL. So he had just been cut from New England, the New England Patriots. And the name of this book is called Shaken because that's what he was feeling. You know, after he got cut, because his apparent childhood dream was to be an NFL quarter. And this was looking like that wasn't going to happen. So, anyway, he writes, he wrote other books too. He's got this book that he's called Shake. And I do what I typically do when I've read a book before. You know, I'll start at the very beginning, and if there's, you know, dialogue in there for people who have read their book, or, you know, I'll read that. You get to a, like a preface or an introduction, I'll read that. And then finally, I'll actually get to chapter one. So I moved several chapters in, two or three chapters in, it's about third or fourth. And he's talking about this story in the Bible. And when it got to the point where We've got five loaves of bread and two fish, and it fed 5,000 men plus women. This kind of light bulb goes off in my head. And it says, as I magnified and blessed five loaves of bread and the two fish, I'm going to do with the number of folks you're going to have to be against. And so even though it may be a small number, they will feed 5,000. Now, not necessarily food, of course, but spiritually. And so what this is saying to us is that even though as I look around here, and I know our numbers aren't what they were 20 years ago or 30 years ago, God is still going to continue to bless us, even though we're smaller in number, for his ministry and the fruit of that ministry. And if he can take five loaves of bread and two fish, and he can feed 5,000 people with it, and have 12 baskets left over, is there any reason why, and I think what he was assuring me is that there is no reason, why even though we are small, and even though those that may be coming to BBS may not be the big numbers that we once said. But he's still going to bless that effort. And those people who are participating are going to be blessed. And they will feed 5,000. It's pretty cool stuff. So, what I want to take out of this is that BBS is certainly one of our kind of, it's always been a key youth ministry. And so we're going to have it this year. It's going to be the end of July. Uh, we're going to do the evenings. It's pretty, uh, you know, again, to accommodate, I guess, you know, the, the, the folks who don't have to worry about it. You know, daycare and whatever and whatever. I mean, this has seemed to work the best. And so we, as a church, have kind of moved this program. I think it's going to work again. 
You know, I think we're going to have kids here that may not be falling out the windows like we used to have, but those who are here are going to be blessed by God. And those of us that are participating in this ministry are also going to be blessed by God. So, you know, it's my, you know, certainly my hope and my prayer that as this church has always supported this ministry, that we'll get on board with this CBS because there's special blessings that's going to be on this CBS. Thanks to you, God. Okay. Our next hymn is number 688, Savior, Black and Shepherd Leas. So those who can say it, and we will sing.
Okay, we all know that we don't pass out the closure now anymore. We've uh, really since COVID, we leave out the place in the back, and you guys uh, thankfully have continued to put your offering in place as you come or go. And we thank you for that. The support of the church is vital to its ministry, and so we couldn't obviously couldn't left the church uh, with uh, you know without the financial support and the physical support. Everybody contribute to participate like a BBS, which is coming up here next month if you didn't know already. Um, so thank you for that. Let me say uh, a prayer of blessing over that offer. So we thank the Lord for the gifts that have been given here and those to be given. We thank you for the commitment of the folks that are uh, members of this church to further you know, its ministry in this community. We pray that you continue to bless them, that our ministry will continue here for years to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's do a pastoral uh, prayer. When I finish the pastoral prayer, we will roll into the Lord's Spirit. So let us, let us pray again. So Lord, we come before you today and give you thanks for the this church, we thanks for our nation. We pray that you watch over it. Continue to bless it. Um, help us to be strong in our in our faith and in our commitment. Let us remember those who have been mentioned here today and those of us in our bulletin that are in need of your healing hand. Comfort them, strengthen them, grant them the healing they need. We pray now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power. So our closing in today, praise him all you little children, number 188. We say it again. Thank you, God. Have a good week.